Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Coach Candy with Coffee Chats. Welcome and happy Monday, y'all. It is a new week, new start, lots of great things going on. Um, coming off a powerful weekend myself. Many of you know I was in Dallas this past weekend and I was at Rachel Hollis's Rise event. Um, and I'm gonna share some nuggets and takeaways because I have to say, was absolutely blown away. Good morning, Yvette. Good morning, Myra. Have to say, was um, completely blown away and it far exceeded any expectations I could have had going in. Um, I also know that some of you were attending uh, various things for your own personal growth and development. And so really want to hear about um, what this weekend was like. Uh, I'm going to share some things, like I said, coming off of the Rise event, um, some really juicy nuggets. And um, it was uh, unlike anything I've experienced. I have to say she kind of brought her, brought her A game and brought something very similar to what you would experience with Tony Robbins. There was 7,500 women in this um, arena. It was completely sold out. Um, I think there was like three guys, and not even joking. I think there was like three guys. But to have um, that many women, that many people come together for something. Uh, good morning, Deborah. There was an additional third day I did not go to on Thursday that was kind of a health and wellness space. Um, but we went to the two days, Friday and Saturday, right? Yeah, today's Monday. <laughs> Happy Monday. Uh, and so I want to share some things because not only you know was Rachel there and her husband, and, and they were doing their thing. They they also had some amazing guests, one of them being my man and one of the, my favorite speakers, Trent Shelton. He uh, joined us as well. And so there was some, some amazing things to share. Um, and like I said, I know some of you were on your own quest, your own journeys this weekend. And uh, I had challenged or asked that you bring, you know, some of what you what you learned, what you captured, your ahas from the weekend as well. I think, you know, the more we share our experiences like this, the more that we're able to grow um, together and um, was really moved. I was, I was expecting truthfully, I kind of tried to not go in with expectations, but I was going in more with the, oh, this is going to be a little foo-foo. This is going to be a little nice. I mean, I, I don't follow her. I just started following her and I followed her because she was an introduction from Brendan with some of the work and on his stage. And so I was like, okay, I like like what she does I like her message she's definitely you know more focused on you know helping moms and entrepreneur moms and that stuff um, so I'm like I don't know we'll see yeah, but my I, it was gifted to me it was an opportunity good morning Martha so it was a gift um, so I had this opportunity to receive the gift and um, completely blew my expectations out of the water it was there was so much depth um, in the two days that we attended, there was so much energy and um, there were some things that really hit deep for me um, over this weekend. And so I'm still processing some of it, um, got a little emotional at times, um, just kind of interesting. And so one, it was a lesson in, you know, don't judge a book by its cover and don't go in thinking you know what something's going to be like. Stay open-minded and allow your heart to receive whatever it is it needs to receive. And I will say that the timing of this event was perfect because there was definitely, um, while none of it was, you know, new material to per se, there was a different slant on it, right? And oftentimes when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And so sometimes we have to be really open because we don't know when we're ready until it actually drops in, right? And so good morning, everyone. Good morning, Shirley. Um, so I'm curious for those of you that had your own, um, growth weekend. You had your own personal um, development events or growth. I know several of you that are on right now uh, went out. What was the weekend like for you? What was it like in terms of the expectations you set for yourself or didn't and what you received um, in return um, or what you actually gained or didn't, what was the experience like? Did it match your expectations? Did it exceed your expectations? Um, did it hit it right on the head? Uh, what was it like for those of you that were um, also immersed in some self-development and growth and some of you I know we're gonna read a little more this weekend so as I share some of the big things um, that I took away from the rise event I would I would honestly especially for the women on the on the women on the call um, I would suggest that you check it out for next year she's got like four or five of them lined up for next year one of them in London because um, it was really that powerful I'm um, like I said I was kind of blown away I was kind of not expecting it to be that deep of work, uh, especially with 7,500 women, and I'm not exaggerating the numbers, there was 7,500 women, it was insane, um, and completely sold out, you know, 
arena and uh, was just really powerful. was uh, really glad that I went, really glad that I had the opportunity that, um, oh, Martha, right? Almost didn't go. Glad I went exceeded expectations. Yeah, if I remember correctly, you were doing a Dale Carnegie thing, right? Um, I love Dale Carnegie work. Um, like I said, Friday, I've done a lot of work. Used to, was actually training to be an instructor when I was living up in Wisconsin. Um, and yes, it is absolutely not what you expect going in. And there are some pieces of it that really are um, a little challenging for sure. And so I watched your special on Amazon made for more. Yeah. And so that was a big message, right? That we're made for more. And I purposely did not watch her Netflix Netflix special going in because I really didn't want to take expectations. I didn't want to be like, oh, it's going to be this or disappointed because it wasn't something. And so, yeah, there was a lot of, from my understanding, from my friend that actually, uh, who joined us Friday, Tanisha, uh, very much brought in some things that she did on Made for More. It also makes some of those things make a lot more sense. And so it was interesting because one of the messages, she had Jen Haberlach up there. She had Trent Shouten. She had a couple different people. And um, one of the things that was really, so we did this whole kind of like, Owning your past, owning your present, owning your future was the way that it was laid out and um, really good. And so let's see here before I start jumping in. Uh, Deb, the class I was attending got canceled. Oh, bummer. She didn't have enough people to make the class. I spent the time cleaning my house and working on the Yes Monthly info. Awesome. So you still did some growth work and uh, were able to feed yourself. Uh, and hopefully you found that that was a good substitute. Good morning, Dina. Welcome. And so, yeah, for those of you that had opportunity to dig in and do some growth work this this weekend um, would love if there was any nuggets any ahas anything that's showing up that you're like man as I, I, I ended up getting more than I thought or I had a change and had to look at something else like you did Deborah is there any big nuggets or big takeaways that you have um, Martha yes Dale Carnegie trained the trainer I was an audience participant and was getting coaching from training candidates got to see what trainers go through yeah so curious as to your experience um, and it's a whole different thing when you view what trainers are doing but versus when you're in it, right? And so how cool is that to actually be able to kind of witness that and observe that? And so, again, if there are big takeaways, big things, happy Monday to you too. Um, what are some of the big takeaways? What are some of the big things? One of the really powerful uh, – there were so many good nuggets and some great, like, kind of one-liner things that dropped in. One of the things that dropped in that I found to be – extremely powerful was on day one and there was this this space around how we the, the idea of wounds or scars versus wounds and the fact that we're so much more willing to talk about because this was the space of being able to ask for help and that most of us are so much more willing to talk about the scars of what once was versus the wounds of what we're living in right now. And there was something really profound that dropped in for me when I heard that, because that is that is a challenging space for me. I, I, why don't I, when I say that, it's a very ch challenging space for me to be in that vulnerability of the wound and ask for what I need when I'm in it. And it was um, my scars, especially when you've really healed and the scars are there and you're like, eh, it's just kind of like, yeah, I climbed this tree, I skinned my knee, yeah, here's the scar to prove it, right? Including our emotional wounds, whatever. It is so much easier for us to talk about what was or what we've gone through and overcome versus what we're experiencing right now. And it was interesting because the biggest message through that was the biggest opportunity for us is to dig into the here and now, right? It's to open ourselves up and be vulnerable and ask for what we need when we're experiencing some of the wounds. Instead of thinking that we have to go by it, go through it ourselves and do this powerful exercise. In fact, I'm going to borrow a piece of it uh, for my next event, which is coming up in October. So I'm not going to tell you too much about it, but it was an opportunity for you to not only stand up for yourself, but stand up for each other. And it was a really, and I know a piece of this is in the Netflix special, but you really get the depth of it when you experience it. But it's really allowing you to see that you're not going through whatever you're going through alone. That there is somebody else around you, if not the whole room around you. It was amazing to watch how many women stood up for various things. And it just, it got really emotional and it was really powerful because I think sometimes we feel like, especially when we're in that wound, especially when we're really experiencing the challenge or whatever it is that's going on, we get in a space where we think we're alone. We think no one understands what we're going through. We think we're isolated. And, you know, Brendan used to say all the time, he's like, there's 7 billion people on the planet. There's how many billions of people be 
before that, do you honestly think that you're the first person that's ever experienced this? And we lose sight of sometimes that not only are there other people that have experienced it that have gone through the healing side of it, but there's other people that are going through it right now. And it's not to say you want to commiserate in that space, but it's to say you know that you've got support and you've got other people that understand. It's to build that muscle of empathy, right? And so I think about that. That was one that really landed pretty hard for me when it was, oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely easier to talk about what I've overcome and, and the challenges I've gotten through versus some of the wounds that are open up now or some of the things that I'm experiencing that triggers whatever. That has always been a challenging spot to ask for what I need when the vulnerability is wide open. And um, some of you may be similar. I'm an out loud thinker, but I'm a very deep internal processor when it comes to feeling. And so sometimes it's really hard for me to articulate. It's hard for me to be vulnerable. Um, and so that's something I constantly work on because I know that that's where the, the magic happens, right? That's the juiciness. And so I just kind of wanted to bring that to light just to let some of the wheels um, go from there and then um you know trent Shelton really got back into a space of what is the reason for your why so it's almost like why do you have your why <laughs> and i really like that because i think we spend a lot of time and in fact for those of you i'm going to do a live stream wednesday night um, anybody that wants to jump on i'm going to send a message out i'm going to actually do it on youtube this time uh, but i'm going to do a live stream about stop looking for your purpose um, it was a big theme that came out this weekend, and it really got me thinking about some things. But we do a lot of work to, to find our purpose, to find our why, and sometimes we need to get into the why that even matters. And so it's the reason for your why, and what does that really look like, so that when hard times hit your life, you know why you want to get back up and get back in the arena. You know why you want to... Um, let take that hit and keep going right and so there's also the space of you know intentions great but without application you don't get transformation and we've talked about that a lot right without action without putting it into motion you know intention without action is nothing more than lip service and it's not going to change your life it's not going to elevate you to your next level um so you really need to apply and you need to put that lean into that space of what you say you want most and so um martha went through the workshop with a handful of job seekers from higher texas job club we got to get to know each other in the experience i was delighted and fascinated watching the transformation in the trainers and participate in participants in contrast to an interview I had last week to be a compensation analysis which I declined to move forward finding out more of who I am and why oh I love that and congratulations on saying no to something that wasn't especially because and I know and I know Martha where you're at a little bit but for those of you that are looking for a new job those of you that are in transition sometimes it gets really easy to get dead. those of you own your own business and your money flow is not happening right it gets really easy to get desperate to take something just to take something and there's incredible power and so I really want to honor you, Martha, for that decision around saying no to something that didn't feel right, that doesn't feel like it's aligned to who you are and what you want next in your life. That takes incredible courage. And so just a huge high five for that and like heart to heart hug. Um, deeply honor the fact that you had the courage to say yes to yourself so that you could say no to something else. And so how powerful is that? That's got to feel really good and really clean, right? Because when we get let the desperate of life we let the desperation of the I need money I need a client I need I need I need I need it ends up costing us so much more in the long run and those of you know that I had a, a challenging situation like that in my business this past year uh, it's not worth it it's not worth it if everything in you says yeah this isn't really my why even if I don't know what my why fully is I know this isn't part of that equation and so that reason for your why that underbelly of why something matters to you why your purpose and some of what I'm going to get into Wednesday night on a live stream and I'm going to put the link in here um, today and I'll send out a message and be posting it um, and I'll definitely tell you again tomorrow um, but the live stream Wednesday is to show you that you don't have to go looking for your purpose your purpose is available to you right now and there's ways to find out what your purpose is without going out and looking so hard and so we're going to get into a conversation about that because I think we need to oh you're so welcome Martha we need to remind ourselves that we don't have to push so hard we don't have to get out there and force it and it's not something we have to find it's something we already have and it's more allowing ourselves access so I'm going to talk about some strategies and ways to stop 
looking for your purpose and drop into something that's more meaningful um, and be in a bigger place of service to allow that to come to you. So would love for all of you to join. It's free. I'm just going to do a live stream um, because I, I'm feeling called to it. So we're going to have conversation and it's going to be great. And it'll be 7 p.m. Central Time on Wednesday um, on YouTube. I will, like I said, I'll have a link together uh, this afternoon. It just dropped in this weekend. I'm like, I need to do this. And um, I'll be posting it today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. So please, 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 we'd love to have you all join us. Um, the other thing was that I really like that Trent talked about was three ways to build emotional resilience. And one of the things he said is, whenever something's happening is to always tell yourself this is making me stronger, right? It's that space where Tony Robbins will say, you know, life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. And when you recognize that everything is giving you the opportunity to step forward, whether it's a lesson, whether it's a blessing, or whether it's truly just giving you the fortitude and perseverance to step forward, everything in your life has the opportunity, if you choose to allow it, to make you stronger. Even if it's things that don't make sense, even if it's things that you're like, I don't believe everything happens for a reason, that's okay and the fact that it's showing up you have a choice am I going to use this to grow from it or am I going to allow it to put me under and so when you allow yourself you I, he said this and this was so and I want you to hear this for a minute perspective can be your prison or your power think about that for a minute I love that. First of all, Trent Shelton is one of my most favorite people. I follow him. I just love him. And he is as dynamic and beautiful in person as he is um, on Instagram. And the man has one billion uh, views on on YouTube and other things. And I mean, just crazy, right? So I love Trent Shelton. And um, I just love that statement, right? Perspective can be either your prison or your power. And so it's all about how you're shifting what you want to see inside any situation. And do you want to see it as an opportunity for growth or do you want to see it as an opportunity that's going to hold you back and control you and that it has all the power, but your perspective, your choices in any situation are either your personal power or your own personal prison. And so think about, do you feel like you're caged right now? Do you feel like you're stuck? change your perspective, change the narrative, change the story. And for those of you that do Yes Monthly, you know we're talking a lot about changing that narrative, right? Changing that story, being able to dig into a way to break down those upper limits and those limiting beliefs. Um, but it's a mindset, it's a perspective, it's a shift. And um, so if you're feeling like in any way, shape or form, there's a there's a cage or there's a place where you're stuck or you feel like you're in prison, shift the perspective so that you can reclaim and step into your power instead. And I just thought that that was um, awesome, right? I also love that he said, sometimes it takes everything going wrong to make everything right. Think about that for a minute. Sometimes it takes everything going wrong to make everything right. He, there was another statement that was like, he, in one, another one of his, he was just dropping. I, I couldn't write fast enough when he was speaking. I mean, to be honest, I have from Trent Shelton alone, I have one, two, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I had seven pages from him for an hour talk. So, um, yeah, he was dropping nuggets all over the place, and I just loved it. But that whole space of sometimes everything has to go wrong in order for everything to go right. And we don't realize that it's the shedding, it's the unpacking, it's letting go of things that no longer serve us. The other thing that he said that probably was one of the most profound things that is my biggest takeaway was that sometimes you have to do things that hurt your heart in order to heal your soul. I'm just going to let that one sit for a minute because that one gives me chills, makes my eyes water, um, makes me take a deep breath and, and sit back up. Think about that for a minute. Sometimes you have to do something that hurts your heart in order to heal your soul. And so think about maybe there's people you need to get out of your life that it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt your heart. And in order to heal your soul and move to the next level, it's something that you need to do. Maybe you need to let go of an expectation or, or a space of, because one of the things he talked about too is sometimes you got to let go of the dream to live your purpose. And what he means by that is, I mean, he's been playing football since he was five years old and he didn't, wasn't as success, successful as he wanted to be. He played for the NFL. He got cut by many teams and realized that all of that happened. His dream was to play football. That's all he knew. That's all he breathed. That's all he had. 
Um, and it wasn't until he let go of that dream that he could stand in and find his purpose. And I think about the same thing. I grew up thinking I'm going to be badass in corporate. I'm going to, I'm going to, I went to engineering school. I'm going to do all these things. And there was this big dream about having a corner office and being a VP or an C level executive. And I let go of that dream to feed my soul, to find my purpose, which is here to serve you. And I get to be whatever I want to call myself, right? CEO of my own company. Um, but my future, does, my purpose didn't look like what I thought it did with all of the things that I had been prepping myself. I did all these programs to get me academically ready for my future, which I am glad I did. And it was letting go of uh, that dream that allowed me to step into a bigger purpose, allowed me to step into a bigger space. And so there's a lot of power in that, right? There's a lot of space in sometimes you have to do something that hurts your heart in order to heal your soul. And so Martha, yes, everything going wrong can get me up unstuck and moving forward, right? Yeah, sometimes everything has to go wrong for everything to go right. And I think about that, I'm like, that's that's just so powerful that sometimes we need to let everything go wrong because it's the only way we can unpack, it's the only way that we can get rid of, um, disengage from, let go, whatever you want to call it so that we can stand forward and see that everything's actually going right. Because sometimes we're so connected in the space of trying to control it, the how, the what, or the how, the why, the when, and we lose sight of, sometimes we got to release those anchors because that's what they are, they're anchors, and allow ourselves to receive and open up access. And so let everything go wrong sometimes. It's okay. Those things are going wrong for a reason, right? Uh, Martha, Yes, the decisions that have hurt me to the quick have helped me move up and out. And the only way out is doing the right thing, grieving the loss and being open to what's next, right? Yeah, and so sometimes, thank you for that, Martha. That's beautiful. Um, thank you. Think about that. There are things that have definitely hurt my heart that have been, I remember the day, and I mean, you want to talk about hurting my heart. I remember being 22 at my dad's house in Philadelphia. And I remember standing in front of him with my brother and sister bawling behind me and scared because it was one of the first times I really, well, it was the biggest time in my life I stood up to my dad. And I basically, I didn't basically, I very clearly said, we're done and you're no longer part of my life. And I completely decided that in order for me to heal, in order for me to be able to step forward and get what I need, that I had to extricate myself from my father completely. And I remember standing in front of him and we were actually up in his bedroom and my sister and brother were behind me and all kinds of things blew up that weekend and it was just really hard. And I got to a point where I'm like, no more, I'm done with this, I'm done. I, I, can't, I can't do what I need for my own wellness until this man is out of my life. And I stood there and I very clearly told him, why I was removing him from my life and what the conditions of this were that he was not allowed to reach out to me. Nothing. I wanted nothing from him. And um, it hurt my heart. It hurt my heart so much. I mean, this was my father, right? And it was the most powerful thing I did to heal my soul. And many of you know, I didn't speak to my father for 15 years before he passed. The only time I spoke to my father in between that was when my grandmother passed and because I was executor on her will, um, I had to share a couple things from the, the will with my father. Other than that, I held to the fact that I never had another conversation with my father. And even when he passed, which now it's been nine years, I'm at such peace with that decision. My life would not be what it is right now. I wouldn't have had the healing to do the work that I get to do with all of you and with so many people had I not made a decision that just destroyed my heart. Um, but it so powerfully healed my soul. And so I think, you know, that you just like Martha saying, it's such a powerful space, right? And such an opportunity. And so um, the other thing he talked about was, you know, keep moving forward and you don't have any other, and, and to tell yourself so that emotional resiliency is like, okay, this is, this is helping me be stronger to keep moving forward, no matter what is trying to push you under, keep moving forward. And then the last piece on that was, Tell yourself that you don't have any other option. The thing is when, and I get people that can get really charged up by this, and I remember I had a LinkedIn feed that got really charged up um, because I posted something that said, if you have plan B, you don't believe in plan A. And I had people that really lit that up, right? And I truly believe that to my core. I'm not saying that there's all kinds of different ways you're going to get to plan A, but if plan A is what's in your heart, a plan A of what's in your soul. If you know that this is what's speaking to you and you allow yourself to set up all these other, well, just in case scenarios, it means you haven't fully committed and put yourself in the space to live and breathe 
plan A. And it's really easy because when things get tough, you're like, oh, I guess I'll just go do this again, which means you're not pushing through. It means you're not persevering. It means you're not doing the work required because there's work required. I tell people all the time, it'll say, Candy, you're so lucky. And I'm like, you want to know how I spell luck? W-O-R-K. The, the luck people think I have in my life is because there's been a lot of work. There's been a lot of effort. There's been a lot of trials and challenges and tribulations that I have purged, pushed through. I have healed through. I have redirected and come up with a different way to get it. But plan A has stayed the same. The work that I do, the space that I am creating the outcome might be different, but the, the context, the purpose, the space that I live in has stayed the same. And so just want you to think about that a little bit. There's so much more, and I'm going to be sharing other pieces and nuggets, but I really wanted to bring you those kind of juicy things that were just really buzzing um, inside of me. One is that whole space of perspective, right? You're perspective can be your prison or your perspective can be your power and it's up to you to decide which side of that track you want to be on right the other one is really around sometimes you need everything going wrong before everything goes right and in addition to that sometimes you need to do something that hurts your heart in order to heal your soul and so just really three good morning Shirley really three um yes like when cortez burned his boats no turning back yes there are some bridges you need to burn i am not a fan of bridge you know burning off bridges i'm not a fan of extricating everyone out of your life just because they're difficult i don't believe you have to do that i do believe there are some people i don't care if they were your sperm donor your father your mother your bloodlines i don't care there are some people that if they are extremely toxic if they are always trying to put you into a prison, if they are always doing things that are harmful, whether physically, emotionally, or mentally, then you need to burn that bridge and you need to not look back and you need to go as far away from them so that you can do the work that's required to heal so that you can live your life and unattach yourself from um, that toxicity which can pull you under. And too many people are still allowing someone who is extremely toxic um, or things that are extremely toxic, addictions, other things that are holding you back Back, um, to take your personal power and so everything we do is an opportunity and for you to say yes to yourself and to say yes to yourself means you are the one that is empowered empowerment is not anything anyone can do to you empowerment is a choice of you reclaiming and, and owning your personal power which means sometimes you have to make these tough decisions sometimes you have to do the extra work sometimes you have to show up powerfully and differently than everybody else and the reward is that you're getting the fulfillment the life you want you're having the freedom where other people are still caged and stuck and so it was like i said it was an amazing weekend um surely have a plan b and didn't know it eight menial hours at a homopathic nutrition store oh my god right yeah because here's the thing and thank you for sharing that Shirley. because think about that when you're work so focused on plan b you end up exhausted and tired and i'm not saying that sometimes you don't need a side job when you're when you're trying to build your dream or when you're doing something, but if you're investing all your time in that space and then not investing back into what you want most, um, what's it costing you? And so sometimes we do one thing that's a quick fix to get us money to do things instead of saying, no, I'm gonna do this because that's my resources so that all my other time is to build this out. Um, there's an opportunity for that, right? So be mindful that if it's something that is taking so much of your energy and time and focus, you can't focus on plan A, you probably have it set up as plan B uh, rather than a resource to help feed plan A. So there is a difference. It's not that you can't have part-time work. It's not that you can't be doing other things, but it's about how you carry your energy and what you're doing outside of the space where that might be a resource for you. So I appreciate you sharing that because there is, there's a difference there, right? And there's a perspective. And again, you can either find yourself in a prison where you're like, oh my God, I'm completely, all I do is work for this other thing. Or you're like, oh no, that's my power. It's feeding my dream and all that, those resources and what I'm learning there is going right back into what I'm trying to build out. So again, it's just a perspective thing and it's just how you choose to show up. But I love, as always, that you guys show up here, that you're, you know, engaged in these conversations. I hope you're carving out time this week for your own professional and personal growth. And like I said, I will be doing a live stream Wednesday night on how to stop finding your purpose or stop going after them. Figure out the title yet. Stop going, stop looking for your purpose. That's what it'll be called. 
and uh, it'll be seven o'clock on Wednesday. Stay tuned. I'll, I'll drop it in the feed and then I'll also have it posted out and then I'll share it with you tomorrow. Uh, but it will be at 7 p.m. on um, Wednesday. I will be going live on YouTube. Um, on my channel so those of you if you're not already following me there um, please do um, because you get all of these these are in order there's a whole library of these all my podcasts are out there there's a whole lot of videos and tools um, just look up candy barone and um, you can uh, find me out there as well um, so with that everybody make it an incredible awesome amazing monday i love you all thank you for showing up this morning and uh, i'll see y'all tomorrow 7:30. AM back here for coffee chats with Coach Candy. I'll talk to you then. Bye everyone.